What's going on everyone? My name is John Esparza with the El Paso Society for Musicians of the Future. Last week, my fellow ambassador covered all the wonderful string instruments found within the symphony. Today, we'll be taking a look at the history and functions of the four main instruments within the woodwind section. All woodwinds produce sound through the player, blowing through a reed and opening and closing keys on the instrument. Without further ado, let's jump right into it. The flute is one of the earliest musical instruments ever made, dating back to the Paleolithic era, where a simple instrument made out of animal bone produced a noise when blown. This model was further improved in 900 BC in China, where it was known as a chie. All these proto-woodwinds were all known as shans. Flute material varied from bamboo to wood to even clay. These flutes could be played either in a vertical or horizontal position. However, there was a horizontal playing flute that gained in popularity during the times of the Byzantine Empire. During this period, flutes were played in royal courts as well as in militaries. The Renaissance changed the flute to a more cylindrical structure, with a mouthpiece and seven holes. During the 16 and 1700s, a desire for higher pitched timbres drew composers such as Bach, Handel, and Vivaldi to expand the repertoire of the flute. Around 1750, flute design changed even more with the addition of flute keys, placing the flute at a lower register, but more consistent in tuning. Finally, Theobald Bohem, a German wind instrument manufacturer, enhanced the flutes to the model that we know today. He introduced a metallic tube for the flute, and also added more flute keys by using a complex system of rods within the tube. As a result, the flute was much easier to articulate notes, and could be held in a more natural position. A shorter version of the flute, the piccolo, also invented by Theobald Bohem in 1832, can play at an almost ear-piercing register. Typically, there are between two to four flute players in the symphony orchestra. Compared to the flute, the oboe has a much more mellow and lower timbre. Its sound is often compared to that of a duck. Oboes stem from shams, just like flutes do, but oboes are played vertically. From the sham came an early model of the oboe called the hot boy in the 17th century. The hot boy allowed for performers to place their mouth on the reed directly, producing a more fuller sound. The hot boy was used in many ensembles to mirror the playing of violins. Notably, the hot boy gained immense popularity in France, piquing the interest of King Louis XIV. Contrary to the flute, the hot boy was used in a variety of settings, including religious ensembles, militaries, operas, and chamber groups. The hot boy, through various improvements in France and Germany, eventually evolved into the 15-hold and the 10-keyed oboe, which was considerably smaller and narrower than the hot boy. In the 19th century, two distinct versions of the oboe were present, the French oboe and the German oboe. The German oboe had a wider structure and a darker sound, while the French oboe was more narrow and higher pitched. The French version of the oboe was more heavily favored, as it is rumored that composer Richard Strauss proclaimed its superiority, causing the masses to follow suit. There are usually two oboes in the symphony orchestra, and the oboe has the privilege of tuning the entire wind section before performance. The bassoon. This instrument has a very wide range compared to other woodwind instruments, and its versatility as both a singer and a joker has earned its place in pieces from the symphonies of Beethoven to the sarcasms of Prokofiev. The bassoon's origin comes from the more primitive dulcian in the 16th century in Europe, which, like the horns at that time, could play in a very limited number of key signatures due to it only having two keys and eight holes, compared to today's 22 keys and sistles. Around the turn of the 17th century, the Baroque bassoon, which was similar to the dulcian like the harpsichord is to the classical era's pianoforte, was invented, but it did not immediately replace the dulcian. Bach himself wrote works for the dulcian in the 1700s. This bassoon did, did make it into many orchestral pieces of that time, but mainly as a simple and repetitive ostinato. The first real bassoon was created in the 1650s by a man named Martin Fouturar. Fouturar was the first to make the bassoon in four sections, in comparison to the one-piece dulcian. He also added two keys, extending the range down to B flat 2. The bassoon, though, still had a lot more developing to go through, which leads us to the multi skilled musician Carl Armin Rader. In 23, this man expanded the bassoon's range to four octaves and 17 keys. He published treaties on how to improve intonation and partnered up with Johann Adam Heckel to make the bassoon into its modern form. With these new developments, the bassoon was permanently integrated into the orchestra as a pair of lyrical woodwinds with depth. Today, there are two main types of bassoons, the Heckel style and the French style. The Heckel style bassoon has 22 keys and 6 holes, and the instrument has a playful singing quality 
while the French style has the same amount of holes and keys, but has a warmer sound. In both instruments, it is necessary to either position the bassoon on the floor or to hold the instrument using your back via a harness. There is also the contra bassoon, which is a mammoth virgin in tone and size compared to its already big counterpart. The final instrument we will describe today is the magnificent clarinet. This instrument is known for its singing tone, having the widest range for a woodwind instrument, and being portable. Like the oboe, the clarinet is a one tube instrument that is played while holding keys down which covers holes in the instrument and blowing through a mouthpiece. The origin of the clarinets comes from the times of ancient Greece and Rome, approximately in the year 300 BC. At this time, a primitive woodwind instrument was used in celebrations, rituals, and events. Moving on to the Baroque era, the instrument named the Shalomu was invented and had a similar sound to a recorder, but had a very limited range of about one and a half octaves. This instrument had only eight finger holes and two keys for the highest notes. At the turn of the 18th century, a German instrument maker named Johann Christoph Denner turned one of the keys of the Trollemu into a register key, which doubled the key range. This improved the instrument, and this instrument was given the name clarinetta, which means little trumpet, due to its resemblance to the sound of the trumpet. The clarinetta soon replaced the Trollemu, became a permanent instrument in the orchestras of the era. Mozart particularly liked the clarinetto and wrote it for many concertos and featured it in his orchestral works. In 1812, the German clarinetist and inventor, Ivan Mueller, desired to fix a problem that the clarinetto had. As the clarinetto was played, the holes would be covered on and off by felt pads. The pads being made out of felt allowed unwanted air out, altered, and restricted the possibility of extending the key range. Mueller then made pads out of leather or flish bladder to make an airtight seal on the holes of the clarinetto. This extraordinary improvement opened the door for future investors to add holes and keys in the instrument, which would turn it into the modern day clarinet. Since that time, new instruments have been added to the clarinet family, such as the E-flat clarinet, alto clarinet, and bass clarinet. Other countries have modified the clarinet to suit their lo local music tastes, but the B-flat clarinet has remained the most common. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. We have just made it through the exciting journey of the history of the woodwinds in the orchestra. From Bach to Bruno Mars, the lyrical woodwinds have been an essential part of music making. I think that it is important to know and appreciate music's history as much as we love music, which is a vital part of our life. Thank you all for watching, and remember, never stop learning.